but this time it ain't the game, yeah MJ with the six rings, yeah Y'all better switch out your plays, yeah On five with the little flame, yeah Welcome back to the channel, guys. This is, this is Mike, and this is the Variety Show, and we got a new segment on the channel. This is the this is Barber Shop Talk. Welcome to the Barber Shop, and we stand here about to get our hair cut, metaphorically speaking, and we're going to have some conversations. Joining me today is my dad and my uncle. What's up? What up, dog? What up, what up? And I'd like to thank my dad for, for giving this ideas, for making for giving this ideas. So this is what we, we're gonna talk about. What do we think? We're gonna we're gonna pretty much talk about basketball movies. We're gonna try to touch upon a couple of them today, this episode, but we got a whole bunch of other episodes. We were talking off air about ex-girlfriends, ex-wives. Um, that's going to probably be a future video because if we talk about that now, that'll be really a long video. But if y'all want to see that video, leave it down in the comment section. So, yeah, what do you got? Let's talk about basketball movies first. I'm going to start off by saying my favorite basketball movie of all time is probably Coach Carter. What about y'all? Oh, man. There's been a lot of basketball movies, uh, name a few. Coach Carter sticks out. Uh, Glory Road. Um, uh, Love and Basketball. Above the Rim. Uh, um, Blue Chips, just name a few. I think for me, my my favorite one, Coach Carter is definitely up there. What Coach Carter is definitely up there. But I don't know. I guess for me, probably my favorite basketball movie is uh, He Got Game. Mm. Yeah, He Got Game was pretty good. Um, like you mentioned, love and basketball are probably going to hit on both topics. Because <laughs> love yeah. scene plus the basketball, you know. So I know a lot of women, they love that movie, Love and Basketball. Oh, yeah. definitely. Um, I gotta go with one of mine's, man. White man can't jump, man. Remember that one right there. I remember man. that one. Uh, white man can't jump. <laughs> Hustling movie. Everybody trying to hustle each other. Uh, just to me, a classic. Um, I also like Above the Rim, man. Tupac was in that. Marlon Wayans was in that. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good movie too. Yeah, to me, just. <laughs> I just feel that that was a another classic. Uh, you can't go wrong with um, he got game, and I think y'all sleeping on Sunset Park, man. Uh, I actually haven't Did seen you say that. Sunset Park, man. Did you say we sleeping on Sunset Park? Sunset Park, man. I thought that was a uh, pretty. It's time to get locked. Time. It's time to represent Sunset Park. What time is it? Yeah, I, I remember that one. Man. I have the same. Mikey, that was before your time. What year did it come out? Oh, uh, Sunset Park had to come I want out. I want to say like 96, 97, something yeah, like that. It, it was mid 90s, mid to late 90s. It was like 96, 97. Okay. So, so I think we yeah. should almost categorize them because some of them, like Love and Basketball, is a basketball movie, but it's not a comedy. No. It's not. Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, what's the name of uh, what's the name of the basketball movie with uh, Will Ferrell? Will Ferrell? Yeah, Flint Tropics. You know what I'm talking about? Semi Pro, Semi Pro. That's a basketball movie, but it's a comedy. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I was looking at somewhere they even considered Teen Wolf a, a, a basketball movie. Now, if you haven't seen Teen Wolf, it's probably one of the most cheesiest movies you can watch. Michael J. Fox he's turned into a werewolf. And now <laughs> since he's a werewolf, he has to know how to hoop and he's a man around the city. But looking at Go ahead. I'm just saying, looking at like um, love and hip hop, you know, that's one of those uh romantic uh you know, one of those romantic dramas type thing. That was real good. He got game just kind of covered the spectrum for me. Was, yeah, Denzel in there, so you can't go wrong with that. Now, Ray Allen, right. was a little, he was a little, yeah, 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 but Denzel was in there, so he kind of made that movie. 
but White Man Can't Jump at Wesley Snipes and it had uh, Woody Harrelson in it, so they have some pretty good actors in there as well. I got an underrated basketball movie, Rebound. With Martin, that? With Martin Lawrence. Is that the I one where he that. got kicked? Is that the one where he had to coach a middle school team? Because he yeah, got kicked after, after, Oh, man. Yeah. Yes. That's underrated. That's <laughs> that's a very underrated. underrated. Um, yes. I, I love that movie. But Coach Carter is still um, my number one. Um, you got I'm going to say two. Coach Carter and he got game. And Love and Basketball had probably the best acting of the basketball movies. But White Man Can't Jump, even though it was kind of a comedy, it still was a good movie. The, uh, the acting in there was pretty good. Um, Coach Carter was just a real life, you know, based on a true life story. So Samuel did a good job. Um, Love and Basketball, oh. you had, who was that? Omar Epps and uh, Sanan Layton. They did a good job. And then Denzel and He Got Game. Yeah. Park wasn't bad and um, above the rim. That was just more of a hood classic right there. Yeah. It's it's really it's all right, let's talk about some bad basketball movies. And I'm putting Space Jam uh, as a bad movie. Did any of y'all see Uncle Drew? I haven't seen that. Oh yeah, oh, I saw a part of I saw a part um, of it. I haven't finished watching all of it. You no, know, that's a comedy right there. Uncle yeah, Drew it's a comedy. comedy. It's it's, I forgot all about that, and that's like one of the recent ones. Um, it was good. It was good. It was good. The only part that kind of that almost scarred me was watching it was looking at Shaq's butt. I I have no idea why they put that scene in the movie. You know why? You know you know why? We live in a different day and age, man. They got to be uh. <laughs> they have to be uh, very, very politically correct with what they do nowadays. <laughs> I'm just being honest. You got now, you talking about bad basketball movies? I'm gonna be honest with you, Mikey. Rebound is a, was a horrible movie to me. But hey. what about Joanna Man? They go one. I forgot about Joanna Man. Yeah, because it was horrible. Uh, let's put um, <laughs> Air Bud. Yeah, that, that, that was horrible, too. Well, that was what um, the what, dog that was playing. You said the dog. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. Like I said, let's keep going with some bad move, bad. Uh, Guess Right was was oh. garbage with Queen Latifah and um, Common. See, that one, to me, was not as bad. Both of them for somewhat act. I just... I thought the writing wasn't the best. It wasn't like the acting was horrible. That, that whoever wrote that, they just kind of came up with some garbage. Uh, Tifa was playing out of character too. Uh, well, we know she was. Uh, <laughs> Celtic, <laughs> Celtic what about Pride. the six man? The six man, yeah, that that was horrible too, man. Hey, Celtic Pride when they um. Uh, the, the Boston Celtic fans um, uh, kidnapped uh, Damon Wayne. He oh, was playing yeah. for Utah Jazz. That that was horrible. Yeah. What about yeah. Hurricane Season? Horrible. Man. Horrible? I wasn't fooling with that, man. man uh, I don't know why Lil Wayne was in it. Lil Wayne, Bow Wow, um, old dude that played in that Tyler Perry movie. Um, Forrest Whitaker, um, the one that played the um, what's that movie called? The Crying Games. Uh, it I I'll say it's a pretty good cast. It's just I liked it, but I haven't seen that movie in a long time, and I'm pretty sure watching that now it doesn't age well. I got one for y'all, man. It wasn't a bad movie. I don't know if you've seen it. Have you ever seen a movie with uh, Sean Connery, who was the original James Bond? Did you ever see Finding Forrester? No. Nah. I, I, what's that about? Uh, it, he was an older, uh, uh, older guy in New York, and it was a young black guy who played basketball at the school, but he was very intelligent as well. So Finding Forrester, or, or I forgot what Sean Connery's name was, 
think he was an old educator. He was tapped into his academic prowess and kind of like building character and some of his academic ability. My man could hoop. And um, it was just helping him become a better person, a better player and everything. It's a, it's a pretty decent movie. It's not a comedy. It's more of a, a, a drama. I think I did see that movie. Was it that? It, don't they have a scene where um, old dude was just over dribbling, and he told him you don't have to over dribble like that, something like that. I think he did. I know he had game, and um, he was really being mentored by Sean Connery in the movie. It, it was a pretty good movie. Now, when we talk about basketball movies, are we also talking about documentaries? Because if we're talking about documentaries, we got Hoop Dreams, which was pretty good, talking about basketball in Chicago back in the day. And then you got a few other documentaries about basketball that we really got to pay, um, uh, kind of pay respects to as well. Uh, of course, the Allen Iverson documentary. Oh, yes. That's on, I believe it's still on Netflix. I'm not really sure. Is it still on Netflix? I got to check. I haven't yeah. seen it. So, but, so, but I, I know what you're talking about. I saw it. I don't know if it's still on um on um Netflix. What about uh, five? Say what? Five, five. Yeah, that's one of the better ones I've seen. Uh, what about the Kobe documentary? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now. <laughs> I got one for you. I don't know if y'all have seen this. This was old school. Devon, you may have heard of this. Uh, Dr. J played in this one movie from way back in the day called The Fish That Saved Pittsburgh. This, nah. is, like, this, this is like back in 79, I believe. Nah, it, was, it, it, was, it was a little, you know, little cheesy movie during that time. Y'all seen Who uh, Dreams? Who I think I have. I think I have. Seen, I think have you seen uh, Blue Chip? Blue Chip? Um, no, I haven't seen it. What's I have seen Blue Chips. Now, Glory Road about, you know, the five uh, brothers that went to Texas Southwestern, which became UTEP, University of Texas at El Paso. That was a good move. Remember that he got five black brothers to start in the championship game uh, in 1966, and they beat Kentucky and won the national championship. Mm. Glory Rose is a real good move. He got, uh, it doesn't sound like remember the Titans. It's kind of on that level. Y'all remember like that, Titans. Remember the Titans had better actors. Glory Road had decent actors. Uh, Who's your daddy? Had, what you say? Who's your daddy? <laughs> you are sure. Who's your daddy? Man, that's my all time favorite, man. I love that movie. So oh, y'all not gonna talk about Hoosiers? I know that's your favorite one of all time, Mikey. What Hoosiers? Yeah. I don't know what that movie is. <laughs> Be happy you don't know. <laughs> what about my favorite movie? Uh it's another movie where um I think it was Bow Wow or not Bow Wow, but they kept passing the ball to each other. Like Mike or something? It's like Mike with Bow Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I, yeah. I think they that, even made like two of them joints. They did. They made two yeah, of them. Yeah, like Mike one, like Mike two, Street Ball. Uh, the crossover, y'all seen that? Yeah. Now, you know they actually say, I, I'm, I'm, I just don't like it, but you know they really rank Hoosiers as one of the best movies, uh, basketball movies. Mm-hmm. Well, if it is, if it is, then I guess everybody should know it. But do you think, or I got a question for y'all. Do you think they should make more basketball movies besides the new Space Jam 2 that I'm really not excited to see? But what about y'all? I think it need to be a fit for it. Like, reason to have a movie like that. I mean, like, just out of the blue, like, oh, we're going to have a basketball movie. Like, I say no, but if it's a if it's a need for it, if it's a point for it, and it makes sense, 
Yeah, yeah, but just putting a movie to make it a basketball movie, nah. Yeah, and I'm just wondering, it's been a long time since the first Space Jam came out. I don't know what's going on with this whole making sequels multiple decades after the movie came out. They're doing it with Bad Boys. So that Bad Boys 3 is about, shoot, Bad Boys 2 came out in like 2001, 2002, so it's been almost 17 years. They're doing a sequel to Coming to America and not, wow. after 30 years, and now you're ready to do a sequel for Space Jam that came out in like 94. I don't know. In my opinion, that's way too long of a wait to make a sequel. Yeah. Uh, like, the only way I could see them really doing, se- not sequels, like, if they just reboot it. I wouldn't mind a reboot or a remake. I mean, that's, yeah, that's fine. A remake is cool. I mean, kind of like what they just did with The Lion King. That's a remake, not a sequel. Well, that's, um, it's, not it's, it's, that. that's not talking about that. I, was, <laughs> I, I, I gotta use it as an example. Uh, <laughs> they, they I almost would think it would be better to do a prequel as opposed to doing a sequel uh, if you're waiting this long. Because that's what? Like, whatever they choose to do. Um, I guess. Um, speaking of prequels, um, uh, since we just talking now, um, what what y'all think about the new? Well, I know Dad and I really into the MCU movies, but the Black Widow they having a sequel, a, a prequel on her. Do you think it's too late because she's dead? You think it won't do good because she's dead for the sequel on her? And from what I'm hearing, she's going to start off... Well, technically, Spider-Man um, Far From Home started off Phase 4, but since the announcement, Black Widow will be the first movie that's coming out. I don't think it will do bad. I mean, at the end of the day... Uh, Star Wars a lot when they started doing prequels, a lot of those people had already died. So when we watched the Star Wars series, a lot of them are already dead. <laughs> so it just went back and showed you what led to um uh Dark Vader, his his whole beginning, his whole creation. Uh they did a pretty good job with the character development from that standpoint. But I mean, when they made those movies in the early parts of the two thousands, some of them individuals were already dead. So it still didn't uh, prevent people from going to watch the movie, so especially the younger generation. So, I think they can do it. People are starving right now for uh, this whole Marvel thing. I'm yeah, that's what I'm gonna say. I was like, man, saying like they could just put out any kind of Marvel or whatever, and people yeah. just don't see it. It's just people just are into that. Like for me, can't get no bread out of me. <laughs> I mean, I mean, with the MCU, um, what people don't really talk about is not all their movies are good. Like, the best Thor movie is Thor Ragnarok. Thor 1, Thor 2 wasn't good. Um, Iron Man 3 wasn't that good. Iron Man 2 was okay. Um, there aren't... Spider-Man Homecoming was an okay movie. What make... what It's... Marvel does, like, the MCU does make bad movies. And it's crazy that pe- that's something people really don't talk about like that because how popular it is. But MCU does make bad movies. Like, I got a quick question. Um, yeah. You know, so this is the barbershop talk. So you know how I get when the fellas in the barbershop. Do yeah. you mind your barber like really getting involved in the conversations that's going on in the barbershop or do you like dog just cut my hair man it depends it depends on what kind of mood i am because i don't just want to say it y'all know who my barbershop barber is (laughs) but man every time he got a phone call answer it um yeah all right, my haircuts be taking. I got high top. My haircuts be taking like 20, 20 minutes. Mm. Like, yeah. Y'all can't forget, I don't have the same problem y'all have. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm, not for I'm my own barber. But even when I got my haircut, honestly, to my black barbers, it's almost going to be impossible for them not to jump in the conversation. Um, 
I'm not going to say impossible, but most of them going to jump in, especially if it's something that's relevant to them. Talking about relationships or something like that, that's going to happen. And I mean, you know, part of that, um, part of the barbershop culture is, Mikey, they're going to answer their phone. They're going to run outside real quick when somebody come through with the dinners and buy a dinner. That's why it's, it's the black barbershop. That's the type of stuff they do. You don't have a CD man no more, but you know how I go. Right. Right. They're still around. My uncle is around. Man, I just, I hate, <laughs> what I hate about Bootleg, CDs, the barbershop CDs. is mm -hmm. when, like, for me, like, I make an appointment. I normally call my barber, like, hey, how many you got? You don't got none, I'm on my way. Or he only work on appointments on Friday and Saturday. Mm -hmm. So you say, hey, I want to make an appointment for this this time. When you get there, for me, I'm expecting to either wait by like five, ten minutes before I get in the chair, but I'm not expecting to wait 30 minutes before I get in the chair, especially if I make an appointment. Oh, I got something worse. I got something worse. I like, I told my barber what time, what time he wanted me to be there, and he say, all right, 12 o'clock. I get there, and he ain't even there. Um, that that happened to um that used to happen with my barber. <laughs> Barbers, I mean, you keeping it real, it's on that hood level. They be running out, they be going to get something to drink, something to smoke on if they smoking, not the same. I mean, come on. So you told us just like, hey man, where you at? You said be at twelve. Hey, I'm on my way back, man. Be there in five minutes, which we know means fifteen. So you <laughs> got there at eleven fifty five, you don't start cutting your hair at twelve twenty. And yeah. then Honestly, I used to look at the brother coming in after me, who I know is supposed to get his hair cut at 12.30, and he only 10 minutes into my head. Yeah. Hey, I think that's 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 our common thing. Like, hey, I'll be there in five minutes. No good and well, you done left the house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we can be honest, that, that spills over into other, other things. We know there's all certain people within our realm or spectrum of friends and family that I'll be there in five minutes. That means half an hour. We know that their their time is straight up CP time. I'm right around them. <laughs> them. <laughs> With that camera. Oh, man. With that camera. <laughs> Always taking pictures, man. Hey, Chad, I know you know I'm filming like that, boy. I tell you. <laughs> so we go. That's just a reality. Hey, I hope y'all enjoyed the barbershop. This the first episode. So what y'all think? I'm asking y'all, I'm asking y'all, people that's on the chat right now, what y'all think should be the first the next episode? Y'all want to talk about exes, or it could be whatever. Hello? Yeah, I mean, exes, exes is going to be, a, that's probably going to be an interesting conversation. I, my take on it, I think normally dudes pretty much going to say the same thing, mm -hmm. you know. Like, if you hear one dude's story, you, you can pretty much relate and put yourself in the same shoes. That's I don't know. How you, do you, that's uh, how it's, it is for most of them. You will have some dudes in this generation that's a little bit different. You're going to hear some stuff like, hold on, what you do? You said what? Well, well, let's say that's what the next episode whenever that will be why like, i'm next, still that's gonna be huh? the next episode yeah, it might be the best video on the channel watch <laughs> maybe but trust me it's gonna take more than one episode to get into that. Oh, oh oh that might be it's all serious how how to deal with an ex especially in my situation how to deal with an ex when she go to your church and then every time, then every time when she got to do exhortations, she always mentioned me. How I so far broke her heart. 
How dare you, man? I am. I, I break nobody heart. Uh, I, I like that. You must understand, hey. Mikey. Her feelings are valid. So if that, hey, that's how she if feels. I say, that's what if I say, if I say, I don't want to date you. Like, if I no, it's yeah. We're gonna wait till the next time. Just keep that right there. I, All I right, can so, the, I can hear the passion coming up. Right, right. <laughs> hey, and ladies, if you on this channel, if you if Mick got any ladies that's on this uh, that sub to his channel, you know, leave the comments. You know, let us know what y'all really think about the dudes out there. Yeah. Ladies do. Yeah. So just recapping, what's everybody's favorite basketball movie? I said he got white man can jump for Devon. Mikey, what was yours? Coach Carter. Coach Carter. Yeah, I think it's three good picks. So yeah, that'll do it for the barbershop. We got we got done getting our hair cut, except for Trey, and we're out of here. Peace. You can't forget. I cut mine more than y'all. I gotta cut it every day with a little bit left. So hey, every day a barbershop for me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. We out. Peace. All right. This time it ain't a game, yo. LeBron ain't coming through the lane, yo. Y'all best switch out your plays, yo.